So today we're finishing our epoxy piece. Today we're going to pour our red copper and our Caribbean. On, is that turquoise or that's Caribbean? Yes, yeah. uh, turquoise. That's turquoise. Never mind. So, oh, and our Caribbean's down there to the left with the gold. So, but basically what we have here is we did a wood grain epoxy table the other day and I poured it out and the full glass ends up being a little ripply with some of these um, wood grains because we manipulated this epoxy for well over an hour while spraying and torching and scraping and so sometimes wood grain tables aren't quite as perfect initially but I'm going to show you some things. A lot of times what I love to see is just sand it just down to what I don't know if you can see on this side here we have a transition from just how we poured the epoxy now you see where we um, sanded this and i ran um 400 and then um 600 and a thousand on this so this right here is um de-glossed down to a thousand grit but man that is a super smooth top and it actually cuts some of the surface color off so you get a lot more of the striations it looks more like a natural actually a natural piece of stone and that's just epoxy but i love taking the sheen off with an actual sander but then some people want to know what happens if I want that sheen back and very easy. So this is just, I deglossed the, poured the epoxy yesterday, um, sanded it to degloss it. And now we're going to bring that sheen back. Now, um, it is a little bit fresh. This is not even cured for 24 hours, so it's hard to polish on it, but we'll see what we can do down here. Very easy to do, especially if we gave this a little more time, but remember this is your live. This is an epoxy wood grain we did, and we're going to be showing you how to do another wood grain with epoxy today. So ask any questions. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for all the likes, all the support. You guys are an awesome group and I definitely appreciate all the questions. A lot of what we do is because you guys are trying to figure out how to do stuff and I love to just work with you guys and help solve your guys' problems on your job sites. So, so now I'm running 2000 grid on this. It, 2000 is definitely a degloss. It's definitely not shiny on epoxy. However, our next is 3000, and then that's not a stiff pad. Well, up till now, I've been only running a really stiff, firm backing pad here. As you can see, it's a very flat, firm backing pad, not a whole lot of give. And I've been running these um, flat pieces of paper. Now I'm going to a thicker, squishy foam backed pad. So it kind of gives it a little give, but it also, that 3000 and the foam together, I don't know what it is. It's like a, I don't know, I'm not an expert on that, but somehow it really starts bringing out what I actually love as far as a polish. So you'll start seeing this. And if I was pouring inside of a shower or even a fancy floor, countertop, anything, that's, I would do this, but I'll let you guys see. You got some what? Dope material. That's awesome. You know what? Thank you guys. That's, thanks for joining the live. I hope we're able to help you. If you have any questions on any of your projects, ask. We'll figure it out with you today. And there is not a whole lot more fun thing than throwing a epoxy and pouring it. Okay, now that's the 3000. And this is a nice light color, so you might not see the gloss as easily on the screen initially. But that is, I'm actually starting to see a really nice sheen come back right there. Oh yeah. And now it's just an absolutely perfectly flat piece. Doesn't have any little bubbles or ripples like the initial pour. So you're able to really manipulate your epoxy and have it just, I mean, if you're doing a really high-end home or something, I would come back and polish it every time because this is a very repairable, it actually tightens up the molecules by sanding it too, so you get a little more durability out of a sanded polish top. Can you guys see that sheen coming back just a little bit? And we're about to pour epoxy over this, so I know this is kind of a sidetrack here but we're going over epoxy this is epoxy that i'm sanding right here we poured a wood grain pattern and i'm just showing you from the initial pour to where we sanded it down to a thousand grit and now i'm polishing it back up i'm going to hit it with a five so it's five thousand rather there's the polish that we're expecting that's the pure sheen coming back now that is shinier and smoother than a piece of granite or marble right there and look how nice that pattern looks right there 
without a single ripple, bubble, anything. I hope you guys can see that actual sheen. That's a, that's so fun. That's a sab satisfying thing to watch. Just polishing epoxy. Just so you get that just right there on the right sheen. Okay, I'm gonna pull my tape and I'm gonna let you guys decide. And then I'm gonna pour epoxy over the top and show you how to do this with a little more aggressive of a color pattern, color scheme. Can you guys see that nice polish coming back out? There, that is a that is a polished piece of epoxy right there. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. original down here so this is our original pour and as you see there's a few little air bubbles and whatnot not air bubbles but ripples rather because we worked this epoxy for I don't even know an hour and a half maybe even two hours from when our mix was so it, it got excessive which it still laid down amazingly smooth and most people are fine with that but if you're torching something and manipulating it for like two hours and scraping through it and pouring more colors and that's not that perfect sheen, you can always take and sand it down. This is my probably my number one favorite finish would be deglossed like this. Hit it with 320, cut it flat, 1000 grit, very fast, really repairable, and it really allows you to see the, makes it look much more natural. And then down here, I love this actually polished back up here. So this right here, um, I polished right back up to, a to 5000 rather, and this is just glass smooth here. So I don't know if you guys can see the reflection of the lights, but. If you ever have any questions, call our office and we're about to pour epoxy now, so I'll stop boring you guys to death with sanding, but hopefully that checked some boxes and answered some questions you guys may have had. There's a lot of questions about, can I sand, can I polish, what happens if there's damage, and exactly what I just did, if there was damage or anything else, that's exactly how I would take care of it. Just sand and polish it directly out, so. Learning how to sand and polish is a very important thing. And I'm going to, you guys like this? I'm going to start pouring something over the top and it'll probably piss off half the people that don't know what we're really doing here, but that's what I do best, so. I like to be misunderstood, not really. All right, this is the fun part. Yeah. We have been, dude, good job, Michael. Michael's been actually doing the drips on these doors, that's why they look good. Most of the stuff in the classroom that looks good is because of Michael, the guy holding the camera. So, Ooh, we're going to pour ourselves some turquoise. There is a beautiful color. So, without further ado. Mike. You know what? Make sure you're fully prepped before you pour. Make sure your concrete is sealed, your OSB, your seams. Make sure that everything is already stable, solid. All your highs are ground off, all your lows are filled. Your slab is fully sealed. Um, make sure your mixing station is organized, Mike. And make sure you have fun. If you stay organized and you don't mix too far ahead, um, and do it right now so you can call our office if you have any issues or whatever during if you run into any questions or whatever and most of all just enjoy your time today Mike and and stand back every once in a while and look at the whole floor and look at pictures and say man this is the picture I was kind of shooting for am I doing what I'm supposed to or did I just kind of dump that crap on there so that's what I try to hold myself accountable by going back and looking at certain things so that was a metallic um, color that I just poured a metallic turquoise. Now this is a liquid pigment, an opaque pigment, not a colored pigment, or not a metallic-y pigment, rather. So, a uh, red, so it's quite a bit different. I'm trying to make it kind of predominantly red on one side, predominantly turquoise on the other, which obviously you guys just saw me do that, so I didn't need to explain that. Y'all having a good day? Pour a little 
little bit of my gold. Now, I was going to save some of this for a little bit, but I'm not sure how much of it I want to save because it is getting hot. So I'll pour it down and leave some in my cup, but we can do a lot with that little tiny. There's probably not even one fluid ounce in there, but you'll see just how much we can actually do with that. Now, this is our Caribbean, one of my favorite blue colors we have. Same thing, it was getting a little bit warm, so I'm gonna dump the majority of it out. That'll actually, now there's not a mass sitting in the bottom of that cup, not a large mass, so it should allow it to slow that exothermic reaction down, take longer to cure. I'm gonna wanna be thoughtful how I do this, because if I just roll back and forth a million times, I'm gonna blur all my colors, and it'll all be one big nasty color. Dude, thank you, Mike. I sure hope you're having a good day today. And I do love me some white marble. So. Jerry, thank you, man. Thank you all for all the support. We have some very good customers. Remember, call that customer service. If you're doing casting, really never torch it. Make sure you keep it nice and cool. Be patient with that cure. Mix it very thoroughly. So casting is really fun to do i love doing casting projects and i'm excited to see how your all tur turns out so okay this piece is like the reddest the reddest door i've ever seen You guys want to tell me what's on your guys's mind what secret what's your dirty little secret what do you want to share on TikTok to all your friends that are watching I'm sure none of your friends are watching so tell us some dirty secret of yours you flick the bean watching mar white marble videos There. Oh, I don't know. I'm not too terribly against that. You know what? We will do something like that. I'll do. I'll do a cool. Well, I don't know that it'll be cool. See how I, see how I say I'll do a cool table. It'll probably be a disastrous mess, but it'll be cool, looking for us and fun for us. So, shake my gold up. That is a foam roller. The only lint-free rollers I really believe in are foam rollers, so that's what we usually pour with. So this is our gold mica powder, spraying out out of 99% isopropyl alcohol. Don't ever light fires, kids. Don't ever do what you see me do on my channel, ever. Basically, if you're a mom and you're trying to teach safety, you could play all my videos to your children as examples of what not to do. So. fire for a bit because I've sprayed a somewhat copious amount of alcohol down. Just a little bit of charcoal. All right. You know what? Don't ever let your buddy. It doesn't sound like you have a buddy if he stops you. 
Oh, light not. Yeah, don't ever. If you have a really good friend, don't ever light it on fire. I, I misunderstood that one. I was thinking you had a buddy that told you not to do epoxy. Now I am looking for my chintzy little cut trowel, and if I don't have one, I'll just cut one and show you guys how I do this. It's a Ah, did we use up? Oh no, they're right here. Michael always has what he needs. All right, so we're gonna scrape and try to put some striations in this. It really does. That's I'm liking that turquoise on gold color. So I'm hoping this kind of contrasts everything we have and highlights the different colors in here. This is usually the part that. I like that kind of makes your piece go together. I try to always swipe off one end all the way off the other end. You don't want little U-turn or stop marks on here. You don't want to also try to purposely drag any excess epoxy off that end, but you do want this your strokes to go all the way off the end, if that makes sense. Did you make that tool? I did make this tool. This is just scissors and a little plastic putty knife. Just cut some notches in it, nothing. Trust me, if I did it, I guarantee it ain't that special. All right. All right, now I am going to. Remember kids, don't ever torch a countertop by spraying alcohol on it just because it looks fun. Just because Levi does it, doesn't mean you should do it. gold. This also helps evaporate it really fast, so not a, obviously not the correct way to do it, but I'm getting a lot of gold down very rapidly. All right, now to leave it. I don't want any flame now. Just want some heavy gold, and I'm going to let this set because I want more down on the surface before I scrape it the next time. Where's my charcoal? There's my charcoal. I'll spray some random, get a little bit of selling in there for a little bit. If you can see, I sprayed down that gold and created kind of somewhat of a layer. Let the alcohol dry out of it, leaving just a really thin layer of gold accent at the top. And now I'm spritzing just droplets of charcoal down on the surface, allowing the base to kind of separate It does shorten the cure time a little bit just because of the heat. And you could torch it, it'd just be slower and much safer. So I decided how I want to do the cabinets. I'll let you guys vote on if you like my cabinets, but I haven't finished them yet. And we just actually came upon what I hope is our final design today. So let me know if you like what we did for our cabinets. And if you don't, if you guys have better ideas, let me know. Maybe we'll change it all. All right. That's actually a really good. I'm kind of liking that charcoal on gold on blue. I don't know. But I gotta let it settle. Gotta let some of these things settle, or you just won't ever really see them for what they need to be. So, you gotta let them settle, let them dry, come back, add more later. If you go overboard right now, it's so easy to just. Um, so easy to actually go too far. Like I'm doing right now. Okay. Where is my wall epoxy? I'm about to pour and try you guys something totally different. So this is kind of exciting, guys. I'm going to show you guys how to do something quite a bit different than what we've done before. Oh, there's the mix. I'm sorry. Michael. What color do we want to put in here? Yeah, yeah, it's really good. What color do we want to start out with? What base do we want in here? 
What do you guys think? Something, something, I think I'm gonna freehand the wood grain pattern. And we're gonna do a wood grain pattern on top. This is our black marble that we just did the other day with you guys. And I am going to kind of freehand a little bit of epoxy down here. Trowel it out really nice and flat. Then I'm going to use a very inexpensive wood graining tool to create a texture across the surface. If we like that, we'll leave it. If we don't, we won't. So. Is it kind of quiet today? Everybody trying to get back to work. Apparently it's a quiet day in the TikTok world. The people that the people that control our algorithm all oh, of that what are we doing that's why it's a slow day because Levi was about to make a boo-boo but that's kind of what Levi does I'm thinking way too far ahead guys I'm actually thinking already of what I'm gonna do after this live I should keep my mind here with you guys and black pigment probably and I think I'm going to do the black pigment because this is going to be very contrasting. You guys are going to see some, some awesome colors. And this is probably one of the simplest and most inexpensive ways to get a huge wow factor. So if you want to impress your friends and neighbors. Like that dumb ginger guy on TikTok told me how to do this. A little bit of wall epoxy. I don't have any good jokes for you guys today, guys. Okay, we got our black wall epoxy. As you see, we call it a wall epoxy. It's a non-sag vertical epoxy we make. And then we trowel this onto walls, showers. It's totally obviously waterproof. It is an epoxy, so um, very durable epoxy at that. tile surface with edges, I would trowel just like this to get it all flat, um, and then I would pour directly over the top if it was a countertop, um, or a flooring epoxy if it was a floor. So very, very easy to do, and if you call our office, just send pictures in, we'll walk you through the whole thing, kind of help you with all of that, kind of, kind of what we do here. So. All right, make sure I... A lot of trials, they kind of have a belly to it, like one side, you know, a curve to it. So always make sure that belly is down. Um, I don't know that anyone else would call it a belly. Maybe just because I have a belly, I call it a belly. Um, yeah, they can. I, I use wooden stirring, use wooden stirring sticks on almost everything, but um, just realize like we're usually pouring countertop epoxy or something like that, and it's a enough volume that we're actually pouring. When you're pouring a lot of volume of product, it's you know micro bubbles usually can just be torched out later really easily, so it's not a big deal. But if you're pouring like a casting product or project or something, man, it's really important that you. I must say, I do believe that somehow we have all these old formulas and batches we try to use up around the office. And somehow we have, because I probably dipped into that wall epoxy batch like 40 times, somehow we have a bunch of contamination in this, so chunks of debris. Such is life. Where are you guys watching from today? All right. Miami. Thank you. I love giving you the tip. Kansas City, how is it out there? Are you guys really humid right now? Is Kansas City like the most humid place or are you guys kind of dry? 
I was kind of wondering. I might have to drive through there on the way to a job soon. And I was, I have not been through Kansas City since I was like 19. So, New Jersey, New Orleans. You guys, you guys just got done partying. It is raining and humid. Raining and humid. Sounds nice. I, I do miss the rain. I do miss the rain. That is one thing I will say. You know what? Trying to get all my edges here, guys, and I apologize. It's kind of that little painstaking method of hitting edges. I just want them 100% covered on the bottom side. So and then I'm going to do something really ghetto with my finger. Not what you thought. I have a friend that might buy a houseboat, and I don't really give a damn about a houseboat, but it's an old dilapidated piece of garbage, it looks like, and they want to fix it up. And I, first I was like, no way. And then I thought, wait a minute, what if we epoxy everything on that thing? So I was like, you can drop it off at my office for free if you let me do some floors and countertops and fiberglass repair with our epoxy. So I don't know who would want to see that, but I'm kind of excited now. So hopefully they actually bring it by and let me do that. Dude, thank you guys. You guys are so kind. Let me try. I'm going to try to take a finger here. Basically curve it the shape of the edge there. Now, I don't care that this is perfect at all because I can keep troweling and troweling on this until I get exactly what I want. I love this wall epoxy, how it just does not sag. You can kind of create whatever you want to out of it. Don't be afraid to get your hands in it a little bit. But, but of course, wear protection. Ah, now I'm a mess. Only one glove. There they are. I always wanted to go see that guy in that, well, how do you, I, don't, I can't even say his name, Modus Yahoo or whatever in concert. I've never been to a concert before though. All right, now I'm gonna clean my trowel up and grab my spray. I'm gonna start spraying a little bit of accent on here and we're gonna go for that light, sorry, sorry. Maybe it help if I unplug your there like they've been sitting forever. These bottles, if they've been sitting for a while, don't be afraid just to open up that top, clean them out. Okay, I'm going to layer a few different colors on here and kind of trowel for a second, so we should probably get some really fun looks in this. This is kind of fun. I like working with our non-sag epoxies because you can just get patterns with using trowels and whatnot that you can never really get just with a flowing epoxy like our regular countertop, which I love both, but it's just a unique, different textured look. 
you can still sand them off and polish them the next day. You won't have any problems. So, and there is debris. I may as well get it now, not later. That's what happens when you work in a big dirty shop and use old products and stuff all the time. That's what happens when Levi, that's me, works in your shop. Because I always have the little messes I make. Okay. I do want this first base layer to just be a really smooth layer of like striated color. You know what too? If you're not sure what you're doing, this is where you stop and you just say, you know what, I'm having fun. I'm gonna make sure I have fun with this until I get the look I need. Oh, Levy. Now you try not to cuss because you have to do push-ups and you've been serious about it lately. You guys can probably tell my journey of fatness has a lot to do with whether I cuss or not. When I'm not cussing, it's really just because I'm doing push-ups for it, so I cuss less and I get in shape. And then I learn how to not cuss as much because I do 20 push-ups every time I cuss and I learn how to not cuss. I get good at that and then I get fat. So maybe I should just keep cussing and doing push-ups. Give it some purple nurple. No, I don't think that's not the name of it. This is just purple. start doing kind of a it's a small piece to do this but I'm going to try to kind of separate our colors a little bit so that we can get kind of a pattern when I trowel come on Levy gotta get that Caribbean on there it's crazy how Caribbean it comes out so like that deep green where, um, and man, when you um, spray this Caribbean on any other color, it's just a deep Caribbean blue. So, so definitely testing is valuable whilst doing this. Oh. What's that? Jason sent us a sail away. Oh, a sail away? Yeah. Dude, good for you. Thank you, Jason. It's going to be looking like the northern lights soon. Oh, yeah. Minus the fact that I have to trowel it so it might not turn out perfect. There we are. Oh, snap. Oh, Michael? Um, I think I might owe Michael a pair of boots in here, dude. No. I don't even know how Michael comes in here. Like, he always comes in dressed classier than anybody I know. And he works in a messed up, dirty shop all the time. Means he's freaking organized, guys. Organized and clean. Okay, yes, I'm liking that. I don't know if you can see that color in there. I'm going to be trying to lay this edge down just nice and smooth, trying to get it smoother. I don't want to have to sand that much stuff off. And it is a rounded edge. I could have made, actually made myself a custom tool. I've actually done that before. I've bent metal and I've actually cut pieces of trim and rounded it in like the perfect hole saw or all kinds of stuff to make like edging profiling pieces. So. Never be afraid to just make your own tool, so. It's funny, some countries I go to, I, everybody thinks I'm like the most ingenious like man that can do everything that they've never seen. They're like, how do you know how to do everything? And I'm like, I'm not that good. And I go to other countries and everybody's just good at everything. Everybody knows how to make their own tools and do stuff. And you're just hoping you can keep up. Never be afraid to make your own tool if you got to. Let me know what you guys think too. So, this is your guys' live. Oh, yeah, that's, we're getting that good.
What instrument should I learn how to play? I think I want to learn how to play a guitar. What do you guys think? I'm not very musical, so. Guitar? Is that Nick Van Overbeck? No. Nick Van? No. Thank you, Nicholas. I appreciate that, bro. I'm trying to get my little boy to do something with me, too, so he'll... I mean, he does all, everything with me. He's a little badass, but I thought it'd be fun if he wanted to learn how to play guitar or something. Dude, the violin does look hard. And I'm not, like... I'm not a really delicate person, so I might not be the best for a violin. Just saying. You know, if nobody would ever guess this, but I was in a choir for like two and a half years. And if you want to know how I was in a choir, is I got in trouble so many times that my dad dropped me off at this horrible all-boys school. It's actually a beautiful area. It's called Castle Valley, Utah. It's the most beautiful place on earth. But it was a crappy school when I went there at first. And some great people, but not the greatest school. It was for kids that were in trouble. And they tell me, if you don't know how to play an instrument, you have to be in the choir. And I was like, it's not even possible. Like, you can't make somebody be in a choir. And they're like, you'll be in the choir. Are you in trouble? Or you work on the farm an extra four hours a day. So you want to know what? Before I worked four extra hours a day, I sang in their stupid choir. So now I didn't, I don't know that I made any noise with my mouth, but I did my bare minimum so that I did not get. Oh, and you know what? In all honesty, I actually feel bad about this because I went to my choir teacher's funeral and I was not like, this is not a nice, it wasn't like a fancy private school. This is like where ghetto people go with their kids. But my, my choir teacher one time, one of the kids started yelling that they couldn't sing very well because they could hear me in their ear. And they were like, damn it, like Levi's in my ear. And I probably wasn't taking it serious. I was probably talking shit in their ear and making fun of them. I have to do push-ups for that later. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have said the shouldn't have said a cuss word but yeah so I'm like like so annoyed with choir and I know I wasn't listening or paying attention and then um the choir teacher like started crying and told the class she was a really nice lady she goes Levi's trying so hard in here so you guys need to be nice to him well I'd never tried hard but seeing that old lady like seeing that old lady think I was trying hard made me feel horrible I'd never felt bad about it. I'd never cared about a teacher in my life I was like f everybody like I hated every teacher I got in trouble constantly it's my grandma's breast milk. It's just powder. Um, and, um, man, I actually, like, no, I never made myself sing out loud, really, but I can tell you that I took choir at least a little more serious, and I never tried to cause problems. And, man, a little bit of care goes a long ways. That taught me something that day. I always felt bad after that, too, so. It's funny, I was like... Nobody could ever figure out why Levi was trying hard in the choir. Banjo, that would be actually kind of fun, dude. That would actually be sort of a fun thing to learn, if I could learn. Flute? <laughs> why don't you teach me how to play the flute? So, no, I'm kidding. That was terrible. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that in any immodest way. Nicholas said, I sing in the church choir. I love it. I bet you do, Nicholas. Nick, you're a badass. Thanks for sharing too, Nick. Just hey, if you're if the choir teacher or the priest ever tries to get you to go backstage, I don't know, but supposedly that can be a risky business for a choir boy. So just stay up front, stay in always in public areas. Oh, damn it, Levy, you messed it up on your first stroke. It's not the first time I did that. And judge away, because I'm going to leave it like something like this, because I freaking dig this, and I'm going to polish this. And tell me if you like it or not. But if you guys all say you don't like it, I guarantee, guarantee one of your moms is going to call in and try to buy it. Um, oh, I guess Mike has a joke for us. Mike's got a joke.
You're called an all-American inside the bathroom? I do not know. Oh, outside, outside the bathroom. What are you called inside the bathroom? What am I called inside the bathroom? You're called an, um, an all-American outside the bathroom. I did that wrong again. You're called an all-American inside the bathroom. Son of a bitch. I just saw the he reads these yeah. and it comes back to me and I mess everything up, guys. So you're called all, a all-American outside the bathroom. Ah. What are you called inside the bathroom? I want to know. He said a European. A European. European. I'm a pan. We're all a pan. So there we go. You're awesome. Thank you, Mike. Thank you for the clean, clean, not typical joke. I appreciate those. Oh, yes. That's actually laying down. Okay, in my opinion. Tell me what you all think. I'm not going to torch this at all. This doesn't need any torching whatsoever. Are you serious? That is awesome. I used to work with an old man and he had more awesome sayings than I've ever, ever known. I'd, I'd never even, I'd, I'd been pretty sheltered as a kid and all of a sudden I show up at the airport and this old man, he's trying to like put a, a fuel nozzle in a, an airplane trying to fuel, we fuel jets and stuff. I was like 12 years old. I used to wash, I used to ride my bike to the airport when I turned 12 and I'd wash airplanes at night till like nine or 10 at night and fuel airplanes. I loved it. And this old man, he was like trying to put a fuel hose and he was always like, that's harder than trying to butt F a wildcat in a telephone booth. Or he was like, I remember one time he says, that's like trying to sandpaper a tiger's asshole. And I was always like 12 years old. I'm like, what the, has anyone ever tried to sandpaper a tiger's asshole? I don't think so. And then he'd be like, that's in the morning. That's colder than a well digger's asshole in January. And I'd be like, have you ever checked the temperature of a well digger's asshole in January? No, you haven't. But now, it was funny, as a kid, I thought he was the weirdest old man, and now, apparently, I'm on my way. I'm probably halfway to his age, or maybe three quarters, I don't know. He was probably like 30, and I thought he was old, I don't know. But now he's like, I remember all his sayings and how positive he was. I remember this is one thing, he was like 77 years old, and he mooned his wife just to make her laugh, and I was like, I was like, that's a cool old guy. Like, he always, always cared about everybody but himself. Troy Lamb. Green. You know what, Jason? That's a that is not a bad request. I'll put the green back in it, and then I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna swipe it one last time and call it a day, though, because I do feel like I I'm doing a Levi and I'm gonna mess this up. Not to mention, I have some awesome projects I want to work on today to show you guys. So we're not all here. Ah. That's a cool patina look. That's all. I like that. Good job, Jason. Was that Jason saying this? Mm -hmm. I think that's a good. That was a good idea. I think that gold and red mixed with that green. I think that's a good color combo for like a rusted look. Dude, Mike, you have an awesome day. Remember to call if you have any issues throughout this job. So I'm excited to hear. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining in. This was our wall epoxy, just a little tiny sample of showing what a non-sag formula of epoxy, how you can trowel it onto edges or whatnot. Now, I could scrape this, I could do anything to it, but I'm gonna sand it, which is gonna give it a really unique polished, this will look so different tomorrow or the next day. Whenever I sand this, it's gonna completely cut a lot of the color you see off, and you're gonna have little patches of really cool marbled color. So just kinda neat, very simple, a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe. Thank you for all the likes, guys. I appreciate your time. And as always, do exactly what the shirt says, and God bless you. He will bless you if you do that. So have an awesome day, and I'll see you guys later today.